Welcome back to Simply Solo Playthroughs. We are here again with our top five. This time the actual one, two, three, four, five. Not six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Of our top five best games, part one. So, what would number five be? Number five is a really fun game that involves trick taking and everything else. It has really fun artwork. I really like the artwork. So does my wife. Uh, she's occasionally played this game and it's just a lot of fun. Uh, you're, you're going to be taking tricks like you would for any number of things. You get assistance from uh, these people from these cards and there's a whole bunch of those cards and the idea is that you need to get all of them for Northwood. Yes, for Northwood. There we go. And so your goal is to, of course, take tricks and have things just work out really nice. I should be having a playthrough coming up on this game because uh, I just haven't done one. It's also done by Sideroom Games, who I'm a big fan of. For publishing and will Sue, of course does it made the game so number five is for Northwood that's I wonder what number four is number four is Black Sonata a dark lady Shakespeare London and a 400 year old mystery this is a really interesting game and its format alone deserves to be within the top five because it's a hidden mystery. You don't know who the black lady is. We're going to go on ahead and find out. We have different cards and markers that tell us what things are. Yes, these, some are, everything's, I can't remember if I, pulled, if I did everything, but you go and you find a spot and you have these holes and they'll tell you whether or not there's a black lady is within them. And I think this one will work, right? Yep, there she is. So it's it's fun. You go around, you move and collect cards and make guesses. You'll get clues as you go as to what is and what isn't. And is an absolutely fantabulously designed game. Uh, I can't tell you how impressed I am with the game design. It is just really good. Uh, John Kern? Him? Ken. John Ken did a great job designing this game and of course there are expansions to this. Uh, which you can go on ahead and buy. And oddly enough, it's also published by... No. Oh. Side Room Games again. I like Side Room Games a lot. They bailed me out one time when I messed up really bad. But that's... Black Sonata. And you get to go run around shape run around England with Shakespeare trying to figure out who the lady is and just to let you know we don't know who the lady is and this is a real actual mystery as to who this person is within Shakespeare's sonnets so what do you think number three is number three is one of my favorite games particularly the print and play version of it. And that is Under Falling Skies. And I really do like the print and play version of it uh, to the point that I play that more than I play the manufactured version. Uh, I don't know why that is. It just kind of is the way that it is. I definitely like the components and the dice. Nice thing it has with the rule books is it basically has everything that you need to do with it within the starting components and then you have the campaign. Basically this game is set up like Space Invaders. And 
down here. Okay, set up like Space Invaders. Bad guys come down, you get to shoot them up. They move around, and your goal is to get enough research done so that you know how to defeat them. Yes, I have had some really great Hollywood endings. You can play with uh, differing cities. They have differing levels, and you have just a whole bunch of variants within the games. So you can play harder, easier, however it is that you want to play. And again, this is just a great game. Again, I usually play my print and play version because I just really like it. And I also use it a lot while traveling, so I don't want to mess up my good board game. But that is Under Falling Skies. Roswell. There we go. Great game. And they have a tutorial video. So you can learn how to play really easily. So, what do you think number two is? Number two is Warp Edge. We have to have a Scott Alms game in here somewhere. Warp's Edge is a really great game. There's lots and stuff to this. So basically you are playing if you saw Edge of Tomorrow I forget what else it was called but basically Tom Cruise goes out and he's reliving a day after day after day after day after day and defeating and defeating and defeating and, and coming back going around well you have that's this game and you have all oh, oops something didn't get put away last time you do have tokens i do have the acrylic tokens there we go this is also a really well designed box renegade games did a great job in designing this box Final Fantasy, I hope somewhere along the line you're paying attention. Uh, there are lots of different tokens that do lots of different things. It is a bag builder. And you put your tokens into the bag, you draw them out, and you keep drawing until you can't draw no more. And you keep defeating, they keep coming back, and it becomes easier as you go. But there is definitely a timer on this game that you need to be aware of because it's going to come in and get you. And you have these enemy ships that come down and get you. You get rewards. And there's just a lot of really cool things with this game. And... Um, Definitely number two of top five solo games. And you have, by the way, you also have differing ships that you're fighting up against. That's the easy one to go against. This is the one I have problems with sometimes. And you have a number of different ships on your own, which allow you to go and do things. They all have special abilities. They have different signatures as to how they do work. And they're just really good. So this is a great game, well worth getting, well worth playing. And so those of you who have been really paying attention to the channel probably have already figured out what number one is. The number one game is... The number one game is Final Girl. This is probably, I think without a doubt, the best solo game there is out there. And why is that? First of all, you're set up with a core box. And again, this is a really well-designed game. Dan Ryder, you've done such a good job with these games. 
I am just so impressed with how well they are put together. Everything fits in if they are sleeved cards. The Final Girl is, of course, a re-implementation of Hostage Negotiator, which is probably my favorite. It was my favorite game until I started playing this. And it took me a while to play Final Girl. I actually had it, but I didn't know that I really wanted to play it. I will warn you, the dice are still infused with evil back in Florida somewhere, or wherever they do the manufacturing at. I don't know where it is, but the dice are infused with evil. They do not like you. The game, like Hostage Negotiator, the advantage of it is, first of all, you start with six um, time. And this is your currency to buy other cards within your tableau. Uh, this is a basic tableau hand management kind of game with a dice roller. You want to get this as low as you can get it. If you can get it down to here, it is even better. Uh, having it as low as you can is really helpful because your odds go way up. I'm actually going to do a video on comparing Hostage Negotiator and Final Girl with each other. Now the advantage to this is what I really like is this is the kind of the base set and what happens is it's really impressive you have your killer you have your location they come off yes you can bend these back without any problem get them nice and flat and everything you need is within these box you can mix and match your killer. You can mix and match to you want a different location. So if you want to use this final girl with Hans, you can do that. If you want to put Hans into Creech Manor, Creech Manor, you can do that. You can mix and match the whole thing. So it's really kind of cool. I do suggest if you want to, you're really not 100% sure, buy the basic, which is Camp Happy Trails and Hans with the core box. That I forget what it'll run you. I think it's something like $40. Well worth it. You can then add on with more boxes that are called feature films. There are quite a few of them. And they all come with two final girls. They come with a killer they come with a new location all of it can be mixed up um, i'm thinking i want to play charlie and capetto going through the whole all the other places uh, might play, try some different final girls in there but yeah i want to do something with that it comes in series boxes This is the Siri Box 1. I have the two in the other room. And you'll notice it has all the killers, all the, lo all the locations, and of course the series. And so there's Hans. So you get to have just everything that there is, and it is all in one box. It all fits together nicely. It comes with mats, it comes with everything. Uh, definitely worth buying. It's $179 on the Van Ryder website. It is well worth the money. And I don't like spending $179 for a game. I just don't like doing it. But it's worth it. There are also two mini expansions plus the Christmas one. And we're going to have this one. I just finally got it. Which so far completes my set up through series two uh, without the miniatures. I don't have the miniatures. Because I don't want to pay more miniatures. I'm going to be honest. I ended up buying series one as in pieces. Uh, definitely buy it as the series box. It's well worth it. You will save money, headache, and stress. So Final Girl it is perhaps, in my humble opinion, and every list is its own thing. Whoever makes the list, you end up with variances 
not everyone's going to agree on everything, but I think Final Girl is probably the single best game out there. AJ Pifornio is on the Facebook group for Final Girl, answers questions, they're out there, they're helping. Great, great game. So what is your favorite game? Let me know down in the comments. Please make sure that you like and subscribe. And I hope that you have a fantastic day. Thanks, and I'll see you later.